Nobis Domine Misericordiae Amen. 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 Et mitere digneris sanctum angelum tuum de celis. Qui custodiat foveat protegat visitat atque defendat omnes habitantes in hoc habitaculo. Per Christum Dominum nostrum. Et Espirito Sancti. Amen. Introibur l'altare Dei. Judicame de gusta de ti, chane causa miam de gentilan sancta, abomine inico et odoroso ero e me. Evite gusam tuam, et veritatem tuam, ipsam et eduxerum de la duxerum de non tem sanctum tuum, et in taverna cura tua. Quand il est porté d'une général, il est aussi mieux, il est aussi très triste de sa mère, il est aussi très content de sa mère. Gloria Padre et Fili, au Espirito et Santo. Intrui bon à t'arrêter. A tout heure, nous nous sommes terminés, terminés. Quand c'est terminé, il est aussi bien, 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 il est aussi bien. Sancti se posto di spettacolo, quando il mio sangue si è bocca e spettacolo, con gli appicchi di mani, con gli occhi 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 di mani, con gli
Tam. Sam to zapoznali z Piotrem i Panem, i 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 sam to zapoznali z Amen. Was denn in der Wiesn, damit der Misericordia am Tor? Es soll der Tartum der Nobis. Dominik sagt, ihr was in dem Meer. Es soll die Venier. Dominik muss vor Wies kommen. Er kommt spürt der Tor. Och, ihr muss auf. Oh. 
Providencia in sui disposition in non fallitur. Te supplices exoramus, ut noxia cuncta sum hoveas, et omnia nobis pro futura concedas. Per dominum nostrum Jesum Christum filium tuum, qui te cum vivita trignat in unitate spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Next year, we study Beati Pauli Apostoli ad Romanos. Fratres humanum dico propter infirmitatem carnis vestre. Sicut enim exibuistis membra vestra servire immunditie et iniquitati ad iniquitatem. Ita nunc exibete membra vestra servire justicie in sanctificationem. Cum enim est servi est setis et peccati, liberi fuistis justicie. Quem er... Quem ergo fructum abuistis tunc in illis, in quibus nunc eru bechitis. Nam filis in lorum mors est. Nunc vero liberatia peccato, serviatem facti Deo. Abetis fructum vestrum in sanctificationem, finem vero vitam eternam. Stipendia enim. Peccati mors, gratia tem de vita eterna, in Cristo Jesu Domino nostro. Dear God, see us. Venite, figlia di te, metti per il domino del Dio, scelgo vos, accedite a Dio, metti il mio nome, e faccia il vostro nome, confondendo. Alleluia, alleluia, un legge del Spirito di Maria, voi ci vedete in voce, e contazioni, alleluia.
Sequencia sancti evangelii secundum Mateum. Glory to be dominant. <laughs> 
in il no tempo che dixit Gesù discepoli suis attendite a falsis profetis qui veniunt ad vos investiment dis omino ovium intrinsego satem sunt lupira paces a fructibus serum cognoscetis eus Num que de coligon de spini suvas, aute de tribulis ficus. Si com ni sabor bona bonus bonus fructus, no, no, bon, fructus bonus fascit, mala atem abor malus fructus fascit. Non potes sabor bona malus fructus fascere, neque abor mala bonus fructus fascere. Omni sabor qui non facit fructum bonum excidetur, et in ignem mitetur. Egetur et ex fructibus erum cognoscetis eus. Non omnis qui decit mihi domine, domine, intrabit in regnum celorum. Set qui facit voluntatem patris mei, qui in celis est. Ipse intrabit in regnum celorum. from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. <clears throat> Brethren, I speak a human thing because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members to serve uncleanness and iniquity for iniquity, so now yield your members to serve justice unto sanctification. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from justice. What fruit therefore had you then in those things of which you are now ashamed? for the end of them is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto sanctification, and the end, life everlasting. For the wages of sin is death, but the grace of God is life everlasting in Christ Jesus our Lord. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets, who come to you in the clothing of sheep, but in worthy there are reveling wolves. By their fruits you shall know them. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, and the evil tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can an evil tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit shall be cut down, and shall be cast into the fire. Wherefore, by the fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father, who is in heaven, he shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Nonsense of the week, <coughs> on Monday, the Feast of St. Jerome Emilian, two Masses, 7 a.m. and 11.25 a.m., low Masses. On Tuesday, St. Lawrence of Brindisi, three Masses, seven, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., and 11.05 Boys' School Song Mass. On Wednesday, 22nd, is a special day, um, St. Marie Magdalene, penitent, th third class. There are four Masses. 6 a.m., 7 a.m. low mass, 9 a.m. girls' school song mass, and 11.25 a.m. primary school's low mass. <laughs> On 23rd, 23rd, St. Apollinaris, um, th three masses, 6 and 7 a.m., then all day adoration, which I strongly recommend to you to come, all day adoration, and then 6 p.m. mass. And on Friday, Feast of St. Christina, 
two masses, 7 a.m. and 11.25, low mass, because the girls' school mass has already taken place on Wednesday. And Saturday, St. James the Apostles, one mass at 8 a.m. And on Sunday, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, the usual mass is at 7.30, low mass, 9 a.m. song mass, and 11 a.m. low mass. Now, the devotions and meetings of the week as usual, I do recommend you the Holy Fed devotion preparation on Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. the Holy Hour for Priests, Families and Vocations on Thursday at 11 a.m. in front of the Blessed Sacrament and the Holy Hour of Preparation to the Sacred Heart on Friday at 8 p.m. Also, um, Catechism for Adults on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. I do recommend that to all of you. Catechism for Adults, Legion of Mary at 4 p.m. on Sunday and Inquiry Classes on Monday at 6.30 p.m. There will be a, a Society of St. Pius and third order meeting this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. And St. Stephen's Guild next Sunday from at 2 p.m. in the church. And Dominican third order next Sunday also. There is a day of reparation that we organize on August the 1st, or the first Saturday of August, from the 7 a.m. Song Mass, a little bit earlier, if you care for, and then um, prayers on adoration and prayer until 12 noon, and uh, with the, five, the, the 15 uh, decades of the Rosary and other prayers in uh, preparation for the sins of the world and especially um, for our country so that the law, the evil laws on uh, euthanasia and on uh, drugs uh, do not pass but rather than there is a return to God in the country there is not enough uh, people fighting for life, fighting for good in, in, uh, in New Zealand there is need to pray for our country in this regard I do recommend you the bikeathon we have um, to exhort all of you to participate and to help Father Paco made a little site. You can send a link to um, all your friends and uh, um, even those who are far away in the foreign countries. They can help us there too. And um, yes, we do need that big effort. Um, there will be a meeting uh, with uh, the um, Family First NZ on abortion, euthanasia and cannabis on Wednesday 12th of August, please mark the day, uh, at 7 p.m. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. What is that infirmity of the flesh of which St. Paul speaks today in the Epistle? It is the wound of original sin. We are explaining the creed. We say we believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. That is uh, of the angels, the heaven, and the invisible things, and the earth, visible things, that is um, all material things. And, and Now, when God created all things, it was all good. It was all beautiful. There was nothing wrong. It was absolutely beautiful. So, men were created good, and angels were created good, and uh, everything was working perfectly. There was no evil whatsoever. God had created the material things, and they obeyed His laws perfectly, as I explained last time. He also created spiritual things, and He endowed them with freedom, so that they may obey His law out of love. Now that's very important, I already said it, but it's worth saying again. God did not give us our freedom to disobey His law, but God gave us our freedom to obey His law out of love, which is better than to obey it out of necessity, like the material things do. But as I said last time, don't fool yourself, you cannot escape the law of God. The law of God is good, and God is not going to let evil prevail, and therefore evil will be punished. So God gave that freedom to the angels and to men. What did they do with it? And the many angels chose for God, but some rebelled. As you know, um, St. Paul says to the Hebrews, when God decided to send his only begotten son into the world, he said, let all the angels of God adore him. And many of them offered themselves in the service of God, but some of them said, no, I shall not serve. 
that prideful rebellion was crushed right away. And um, by St. Michael the Archangel who said, who is like to God? Who are you, you Lucifer, to uh, pretend to be like to God and uh, to refuse to serve God? And um, he won the victory and the devils were cast down into hell and the holy angels received their reward right away. Now, the angels are very powerful natures. When they choose, they put themselves 100% in what they choose. So when they choose good in the service of God, it's such beautiful choice that they deserve to be rewarded right away. But when they choose evil, it is such a thorough and complete wickedness that they deserve to be punished right away. And so that is for the angels. Now God created Adam and Eve and mankind in order to take the place of all the fallen angels. That's a common saying among many saints and fathers. So, he gave them that freedom also to choose. But, as you know, the devil came and tempted Eve. God had said to Eve, you know, to, to Adam and Eve, you, you can eat of any fruit of paradise, except of what? Now, that fruit was not bad, it was not poisonous, but it was like a token of obedience to God. And... Um, he said, if you eat of that fruit, dying you shall die. In other words, most certainly you shall die. But the devil came to Eve and said, why did God tell you not to eat of any fruit of paradise? Now, that was a lie. It is amazing how the devil is cunning, because he did not assert the lie. He raised the question. I just asked a question. I did not say anything. I just asked a question. But that question presupposes a lie. See, you don't ask the question, why did God forbid to eat of any fruit of paradise, when God did not forbid to eat of any fruit of paradise, but only of one, you see. So, that lies, Arnold says, the devil is a liar from the beginning. You see. Eve foolishly tried to argue with the devil. She tried to be smarter than the devil, but that's not right, because the angel, devils are angels, much more smart and powerful than we are. And therefore, um, we can't argue with them, you know, uh, we'll be deceived. We have to, to reject the temptation and say with our Lord, be gone Satan, be gone Satan, get out. But Eve argued and she thought he was smart and she says, no, no, God did not forbid us to eat of any fruit of the paradise, but only of one tree, lest perhaps we die. Ah, she is weakening. God has said, certainly you shall die. But she said, less perhaps we die. And the devil can see it right away. And he becomes bold. And he says, not nequa quam morieris. You shall not die at all. But your eyes will be open. And you shall be like to God, knowing good and evil. In other words, deciding for yourself what is good or what is wrong. Not accepting any law that is above you. That is exactly the temptation of the modern world with its idea of freedom, that man is supreme, that man makes his, up his own laws, and no one can tell us what is wrong, what is, uh, what is good, what is wrong for us. That is the modern world. That is not true. We are subject to the law of God, and God told us what is good, what is wrong, and God is right, and if we don't agree, we are wrong. You see? So, when, God, when, when the devil had said that, Eve was tempted. She tried. She took one foot and she ate it. And then she gave it to Adam. That's a wickedness because she did not want to be the only one in evil, so she tried to tempt him. And again, why don't we take it? Try it. It's good. I liked it. You know. uh, and Adam failed to his duty. Man should be a leader in good, not a follower in evil. Adam was not a leader in good. He was a follower in evil. That is the opposite of what he should do. You see? You, see, you men, you should be leaders in good and not followers in evil. That's your mission. You see? In, in your family, in your country, to be leaders in good. And uh, Adam did not do that. He was a follower in evil and he fell. Now, when they fell, they lost sanctifying grace. God had created Adam and Eve good and not only with a good nature, not only with the sanctifying grace, which is the most beautiful thing, participation in the life of God, but also with some preternatural gifts that were like a bond between nature and grace. You see, uh, bonding the human nature and sanctifying grace in the most fitting and beautiful way.
Our nature is weak because we are composed of matter and spirit. So our nature is weak and so God had strengthened our nature with these original gifts of impassibility, they could not suffer. Immortality, they could not die. Gift of knowledge, which made that they had an infused science for Adam and Eve and the children would be born with an, a facility to learn, eagerness to learn, they would absorb everything right away. Like, but unfortunately, uh, it's no longer the case. <coughs> as we can see in schools, <coughs> um, but so the gift of knowledge and also they had original justice. Now original justice was perhaps the most important of these gifts and it was a bond that assured that the um, passions and the body and the flesh would follow the spirit and the mind and the intelligence so long as the mind was subject to God, you see. If our mind is subject to God, then our body will be subject to our mind, so that everything will be in order and without difficulty, beautiful. That is God's uh, original plan. That original justice was like a bond between nature and grace, and it was God's plan that when Adam and Eve would transmit the life of the body, the life of the soul would be transmitted together because it is bonded with the life of the body, you see. And so the children will be conceived with the sanctifying grace and will be born with grace and would not need baptism, they would have the grace of God, the friendship of God. Now, because of their sin and their rebellion and their pride, Adam and Eve lost not only sanctifying grace, but also these four preternatural gifts. And that was a tragedy that caused a wound in their soul. A wound in them. And because the children are born without original uh, sanctifying grace and that original justice, they are also born with a wound. That wound passes over. Okay. So there is the sin that is the privation of grace, that is original sin. The children should have been born with sanctifying grace and are not born with sanctifying grace because Adam and Eve lost that bond of original justice. And so the privation of grace is the state of sin <coughs> and it is um, because of the fault of Adam, but we were born with that privation of grace. We need the grace of God and therefore we need baptism. And we are born also with that wound. Now the wound of original sin is not just the wound of original sin, but every sin increases that wound and renews that wound and makes it more prompt to open itself. And you can see that um, that wound is a certain inclination to sin. Inclination. And it has four um, aspects, and Thomas explains. <clears throat> you have the wound of ignorance in the mind, opposed to the knowledge of Adam and Eve, and that ignorance is a certain difficulty to learn, which is quite visible in schools. Children much prefer to play than to learn. Um, they must, must make an effort to learn. It is their duty to make that effort, but they must make an effort to learn. It's not evident, it's not easy. But there is also a wound in the mind, in the intelligence, in the fact that oftentimes we stick to our opinion even when it is wrong. In other words, we have pride you know, too much attached to our own uh, mind, instead of learning with humility, and that should be, the, 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 that is the right way to use our intelligence, when we open our eyes, we don't make the thing that we see, we learn that they are there, you know, we don't make the truth, we learn the truth, and therefore we must be, we must subject ourselves to the truth, which is in a certain way above us. <coughs> The truth is a participation of God's, of God's nature, who is the first truth and the supreme truth. We learn the truth, we don't make it, we learn the truth. And, but there is that wound in the mind, especially in modern philosophies, people pretend that they construct their own truth, but that's not true. You know, that is pride of modern man. The second wound is the wound in the will, and that is called malice. That, uh, it is most visible in the tendency to selfishness. We tend to care for ourselves and ourselves alone and we don't care for the others and we do everything, we, we, we try to do everything just for us, our way and uh, our will and always me, I and, and my, myself. Um, and that selfishness is ugly and yet it is so common, so common. And we feel that, in, every one of us feel that inclination. We have to say no, this is not the right way. So we have to learn to deny ourselves to fight against that selfishness. And the third week is there a certain week of weakness. Weakness, instead of being strong, and we should normally have that courage to persevere in that which is right, and uh, that is the virtue of fortitude, 
to persevere in doing the right thing in spite of the dangers and the threats, even the threat of death, like the martyrs per persevered in the confession of Christ. So instead of being strong and persevere in good, we give up so easily. We have that tendency to give up. I can't avoid it. I don't strong. I, I, I'm not strong enough, you know, I, I can't make it, you know. And many people fail to do good because they don't find the strength to persevere in themselves. Yes. And that is a big problem in the modern world. You know, before that, when you had a good Catholic atmosphere, you know, people were strengthened and helped by that atmosphere. And um, many people, you know, most people would, you know, make a proper and good marriage and persevere in a marriage. But today in the modern world, people, a lot of young people, they fear to, to marry because they say, am I going to be able to persevere? That's a wound of weakness, you know. These wounds, you, can, you find them all around, in the whole of mankind. In that sense, original sin is the easiest dogma to believe, even for someone who does not have the faith, if he opens his eyes, he can see that wound, these wounds everywhere. You know. <coughs> wound of, and the, third, the fourth wound is the wound of concupiscence. That tendency to um, um, love money, to love pleasures, to love comfort, to love the, uh, to love the easy way, you know, and uh, to search for earthly things and to abandon the spiritual things. These wounds are so common, and uh, we find them even within ourselves, that tendency. Now, why did God permit that drama to happen? The first reason is because he wanted to give us a saviour. And what we lost through Adam, we recover so much the more through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, our Lord, but the thing, second thing is he taught us that way, that we need his grace, we need the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the remedy for not only original sin, but for every sin. You see. He is the, the, um, the savior, the, one who, the, the great remedy for sin, but, and we need him. Because the very acknowledgement of that need is humility. You know, humility is uh, so necessary in order to go to heaven. God resists the proud. It's impossible to go to heaven if God resists you. <laughs> you won't make it. And he gives his grace to the humble. So, uh, humility is necessary for salvation. And uh, if we acknowledge the wound, uh, our frailty, our weakness, then it builds up humility, which is so necessary. So, the, the remedy is our Lord Jesus Christ, and in him we find more than what we lost in Adam. St. Paul explained, we, got, we get from Adam one sin, but our Lord saves us from all sins. You see, and he gives us, you know, so much the more that, uh, that membership with him in his mystical body and all the, the sacraments, especially the Holy Eucharist, things that are, did, they did not have in, in, uh, in the earthly paradise. So we have better things now with our Lord Jesus Christ that we had, uh, that Adam had in the Garden of Eden. But we said the remedy is in our Lord. We need not to trust in ourselves, to trust in Him with humility, but we need to ask for that grace. And therefore we need prayer. You see, the consequence of the dogma of original sin is that need of prayer. You see, we cannot make it without prayer. He who does not pray damns himself because he does not have the strength to persevere in good. He will not be able to make it. He needs to pray, but if he does pray, then he will make it. If he does pray with perseverance and humility and faith, then he will make it, you see. So, prayer is necessary. It's not just a nice thing to pray from time to time. It's a necessity. It's something absolutely vital for our souls, you know. If we don't pray, we won't make it. If we do pray, we will make it to heaven. So, we need to understand that need of prayer, especially because of the wounds of our nature. Prayer and watchfulness. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Eve did not watch, she got caught off guard. Adam did not watch and he gave in the temptation of his wife. Um, watch, pray, watch and do penance. You see, make reparation for the past sins, deny yourself, you know, you have to go the opposite way of that evil inclination, you see. The, uh, the wound of sin is an inclination to fall again. If there is a tree that leads in one way, you 
put ropes around and you pull it the other way in order to keep it straight, you see. And so, should it be for our soul, we can keep it straight by denial, by self-denial, by mortification, by um, uh, doing the opposite of this evil inclination. And uh, our Lord has given us a beautiful, um, not only model, but a helper in his own mother, who is immaculate, who alone is not touched by the wound of sin, who is not touched by the original sin, by the corruption of our uh, nature uh, that uh, started with Adam and Eve. She is preserved from original sin. She is immaculate in her conception and in her whole life. And therefore she is in a good position to help us to overcome the uh, wound of original sin and to, um, to persevere, to practice virtue and persevere all the way unto heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, 
ามสร้างธรมคาทอดิคามเอทาปสตอดิคามเอคลสิฮิยามฮอเนมฮอตุฮอปุมเอเนจเมนตุริสเซอาเมนเดมินุสวะฮบิฮิสกุมสิ่งที่นักขัสติสัญญาตุมเอตตาหุ่มเอตสิ่งที่นักเรียนบุษนิยาหุ่มพิลุยมสิ่งที่อาศัยพิลุยนัสตุมกันฟิลุยตัวอดีตอุตนาชัตบีคุยานนเอสกันพูดถึงการฟิลันติบุษนิเตตามินเอเ
ですね
Babi isko kwe pekatori bos. Omnia secula secula Amen. O Rehemus, recepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institution reformati, o Rehemus dicere. Pater nostre, qui es in celis, sanctifice tu, nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. <coughs> Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem. Omnia secula seculorum. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum.
Misericat o vestri, am nicotin asta, nu s-a demisit spicatis vestris, pe duc ad vos ad vitam eternam. Inugentiam absolutionem, ne tremisem peccatorum vestrorum, pe bat bobisam nicotin set misericos dominos. Ecce agnus dei, ecce gutorit peccata mundi. Domine non sum digno, sud in tre subtectum meum, setantum dig verbo, sanabitur anima mea. Domine non sum digno, sud in tre subtectum meum, setantum dig verbo, sanabitur anima mea. Domine non sum digno, sud in tre subtectum meum, setantum dig verbo, sanabitur anima mea. Corpus de mestri Jesu Christi, vă întâlnim în viața mea. Amen. Corpus de mestri Jesu Christi, vă întâlnim în viața mea. Amen. Corpus de mestri Jesu Christi, vă întâlnim în viața mea. Amen. Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Amen. Corpus de mestre, Jésus, 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 Jésus,
אם יהיה נערים טובים, רק שאני רואה, הוא יותר יפי אז מהם. דמינוס והביסקום. אורמוס, טורנוס דומיני מדישינה ליסופרסיום, את הנוסטריס פרסיטטיבוס קלמנטר אקספדיאט, את אדר אייקוס וטרק תא פר דוקאט, פר דומינום נוסטרום יזום כריסטום ופיליום טום, קוויטקום ווידא טרינגנטי נוניטטי ספיריטוס סנקטי דאוס, פר אומניה סקולה סקולה אורום. אמן. Dominus Vahabis Kum Echo Spiritual Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus, Dominus Vobiscum, Initium Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem, In principio erat verbum et verbum erat apud Deum et Deus erat verbum, Hoc erat in principio apud Deum, Omnia per ipsum a facta sunt et sin ipso factum est dicela quota factum est, In ipso vita erat et vita erat lux ominum, Et lux in tenebris lucet et et tenebri eiam non comprehenderunt, Fuitum omissus a Deo cui namen erat Ioannes, Hig venit in testimonium ut testimonium per eberet de lumine ut omnes caderen per indum, Non erat ille lux ad ut testimonium per eberet de lumine, erat lux vera que illuminat omnem hominem venientem in hunc mundum, in nondo erat et nondus per ipsum a factus est et nondus eum non cognavit, in propria venit et sui eum non receperunt, quod quotatem receperunt eum deliteis potestatem e filios de fieri, his qui credunt in nomine eios, qui non exer sanguinibus, ne qui exer volontat e carnis, ne qui exer volontat e veris et ex deo natis sunt, et verbum caro factum est, et avit avit in nobis, et vidimus o gloria meius, So gloriam quasi uni genitia patre, plenum gracie et veritatis. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita dulce do, et espes nostra salve. Ad et te clamamus, exules filii jeve. Ad et te suspiramus, gem henetes et flentes. In hac lacrimarum vale, Eia ego, Advocata nostra, Ile los tuos, Misericordes oculos, Ad nos converte. Et Iesum, Benedictum fructum ventris tui, Nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O clemens, O
Christ did inspire for found us by and sword. Oh, how we hear the Lord's word, death of our Father's holy faith, we will be true to live till death. We will be true to thee till death.